Bismillahir Assalamu alaikum students Today we are going to start the play Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare First of all let me give you the brief introduction of the writer William Shakespeare Ben Jonson says about Shakespeare that he was not for an age but for all times it means that he uh, had a universe universal style or he had uh, the universality in his style it means that whenever we read uh, any article any piece of literature from Shakespeare's works we feel or everybody feels that this is written for that person this is the style that we call the universal style or the universality of an approach of any writer so th this is the reason that uh, Shakespeare uh, was by Jen Ben Johnson about uh, Shakespeare said that he is for all the times and Shakespeare's style is considered the universe, universal style. He was uh, an English playwright, poet and a writer as well. And he was born in 1564 and died at 16, uh, in 1616 at the age of 52. And uh, then about the era, about era means about the age he was born. He was born uh, during Elizabethan era and died during Jacobian era. What is Elizabethan age? Elizabethan age basically starts from 1559 and ends in 1603. Elizabethan age uh, means that uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth ruled the kingdom during that era. It was also called Shakespearean age, yeah, the age of uh, Shakespeare, uh, who was the greatest dramatist. And it was also uh, named as Golden Age or the Renaissance Age. What is Renaissance? You are going to have a separate lesson on this topic Renaissance. Uh, first of all, let me explain uh, that uh, why the uh, Elizabethan age is also called uh, Shakespearean age because uh, uh, during that time you can observe that uh, this was the age uh, uh, in 60 that remains is Elizabethan age remains till 1603 and uh, uh, during that time Shakespeare's works, Shakespeare's uh, drama Shakespeare plays and whatever Shakespeare has written uh, it uh, left a uh, uh, huge impact huge effect on the society and uh, uh, Shakespeare's most of the work was written uh, during Elizabethan age and uh, there are uh, some of the plays uh, or and the comedies which are written in Jacobian era uh, but the most of the work was done during uh, Elizabethan age that is the reason that Shakespeare this Elizabethan age is also called Shakespearean age got it then what is uh, uh, renaissance or why elizabethan age is called renaissance age as well because uh, renaissance means re re means revival rebirth and renaissance means revival or rebirth of learning this was basically the movement that uh, uh, began in italy in 14th century and later on uh, this renaissance movement uh, reached in england uh, during late 15th century that was 15th century that was an age of uh, elizabethan age or shakespearean age got it now uh, re what is renaissance this is not the revival or rebirth of only literature and learning but uh, 
during that age uh, uh, the rebirth revival in political field in science in economy uh, in literature in every field the revival or the rebirth or the renewal started means the people uh, they 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 got a fear they became a fear in uh, about uh, in, uh, you can say that about everything about uh, uh, some newness they they achieved newness in every field this was the renaissance called uh, the revival uh, in every aspect so then what is jacobian era jacobian era uh, started from uh, 1603 and uh, remained till 1623 and uh, actually uh, uh, why uh, elizabethan age and jacobian jacobian is the completely have is uh, having a different name uh, let me explain because elizabethan basically queen elizabeth she was uh, childless or you can say issueless issueless means she was childless so uh, this was the problem or this problem arised that who is going to own the kingdom after elis queen elizabeth because she was issueless and or childless so uh, james one of england uh, he owned the kingdom after the death of queen elizabeth that is why uh, this era was given a different name as jacobian era so shakespeare's uh, uh, some of the works some of the uh, comedies and plays were written during jacobian era actually uh, shakespeare has written uh, uh, comedies shakespeare wrote about histories shakespeare wrote about tragedies these three aspects you can say that shakespeare is famous for so what is the uh, so for merchant of venice is concerned what is the genre of the play genre means uh, uh, basically it is the style or it is the category uh, in the category you can say that uh, explains that which is the category of the play and drama or uh, whatever the work is written by the writer so the genre of the play merchant of venice is tragic comedy so it is tragic comedy means there are some uh, comic elements as well and there is some tragedy as well so merchant of venice is called tragic comedy got it you can have this question in mcqs so for the language is concerned uh, shakespeare uh, uh, took some allusions from bible allusions means you have read this uh, re- uh, about allusion uh, allusion means the reference he has taken some references from bible from greek mythology what is mythology greek mythology greek mythology means that uh, in which people believed uh, uh, in god go- god and goddesses so there are some references and uh, so for the figures of speech are concerned pun similes metaphors and etc uh, there are so many figures of speech used by uh, shakespeare in this play that we will be discussing uh, each one of them uh, side by side while reading so uh, what is the purpose of uh, using the references and the figures of speech just to add the richness and depth in the dialogues just to make uh, uh, or put emphasis and stress on the dialogues or what the theme that shakespeare wanted to convey and humor is another important element in this play that is why it is called comedy as well so for the settings of the play or so is concerned what is setting setting basically describes about the place when the play starts the writer describes that where did the action or uh, it uh, take place this is called setting so as the title describes merchant of venice venice basically is a commercial city of italy 
so that is why uh, the title is uh, the, the, uh, the title of the play shows that uh, um, the story uh, is all about a merchant a trader who used to live in uh, venice venice again a commercial city in italy and we are also having some references of uh, belmont belmont is uh, uh, just a fictitious city of italy near venice there is no reality in real it is not any so in reality belmont is uh, not uh, uh, to be found anywhere this is a fictitious city uh, named uh, by uh, shakespeare means there is no reality or in reality uh, the such kind of place is not to be found okay then some uses of uh, symbols is very much significant uh, play a very much significant role in the play uh, first of all blood and flesh in the play uh, it it is the symbol of life and existence it means your blood your flesh is it 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 represents your life and no nothing is important than your life S next one is disguise disguise means something or someone uh, not in the uh, original appearance understood you have already read about that and disguise in this play uh, it is a significant element uh, in shakespeare's plays uh, we find it uh, in many of shakespeare's plays uh, this element of disguise and here uh, we find the main uh, character of portia she is a lady a very beautiful rich lady and we find portia uh, in the sh in in the shape of in the form of disguised means she appears as a lawyer she presented herself as a lawyer this is the disguise uh, uh, actually she was not a lawyer at all she just is a rich and a beautiful wise lady this is an element of disguise and portia is presented or comes Uh, as a blessing sometimes this uh, element of disguise is taken as a negative uh, aspect or uh, the characters play a negative role sometimes they play very much positive role and here portia in disguise as a lawyer plays a very uh, optimistic role positive role then ships ships basically are the symbol of business uh, trade riches means wealth and this business is dealt uh, by antonio and shylock then rings are the representation of or the symbol of love and commitment between the partners means uh, husband and wife so they are going to uh, share these rings which shows they are having strong love for one another then antonio the main character or protagonist or a hero of the play is he himself is a symbol of friendship portia is a symbol of love there are some caskets caskets uh, students means uh, some uh, small boxes and here uh, uh, the writer shakespeare has presented uh, uh, three caskets basically uh, the portia's father uh, uh, wanted to before his death he wanted uh, a, 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 a real man an original man uh, he he wanted to select the man who should uh, have the deep feelings of love and sympathy for portia or uh, the, the the purity of love for portia or not for portia's wealth so uh, this was basically a kind of riddle that he uh, presented three caskets three small boxes of gold silver and lead for three persons who wanted to marry portia so uh, he uh, uh, he demanded he said that the pers person who is going to select the appropriate box who is going to uh, open the appropriate box he is going to uh, marry with portia and in one of these in only one of these uh, boxes there was the picture of portia so uh, caskets are the symbol of greed or you can say temptations and other characters they went for uh, gold and silver means they were 
टेम्पटेड दे डिवेलप्ड ग्रीड टूवर्ड्स गोल्डन एंड सिल्वर बॉक्सेस कैस्केट्स बट सो फॉर द पर्सन बिसानियो हु सेलेक्टेड द बॉक्स और कैस्केट ऑफ लेट इन विच ही फाउंड द पिक्चर ऑफ पोर्शिया ही वॉज सेलेक्टेड टू मैरी Portia and uh, uh, Portia also wanted to marry uh, Bassanio. So this is uh, the, the whole scene that caskets were presented. So caskets here, uh, or it is a, it was a kind of riddle. You can say riddles or caskets are the symbol of greed and temptation in the play. Hopefully, you must have understood. Now. Uh, let's uh, talk about the characterizations you know that uh, dramatic persona uh, in shakespeare's play uh, um, they play a significant role there are some main characters shylock you can say that uh, uh, the a question will come in your exams that is a very much important question class before we start i am telling you about this shylock uh is he a villain or a victim victim means a sufferer who suffers a lot during the play that victim means that a person for whom you develop sympathetic feelings so uh, shylock was a jew means he was a jewish and he was a money lender so at the end of the play we will be discussing this that uh, is shylock a villain or a victim so there is another main character antonio he was a protagonist protagonist means a hero and what is the opposite of protagonist antagonist antagonist and uh, this is the uh, the decision that will be taken at the end of the play that uh, protagonist or hero is antonio we know that but an antagonist means villain is shylock antagonist or villain so girls you must be aware of the of these terms protagonist hero and antagonist villain got it so antonio was a, a rich merchant christian merchant you can observe that shylock was jew and antonio christian merchant there are some friends of antonio bassanio Salanio, Solario, Gratiano, Gratiano. You can also pronounce it as a uh, Gratiano or Gratiano. It is a proper noun. Uh, uh, the way you like, you can pronounce it is like Gratiano or Gratiano. Got it? Besa means one, two, three, four. We are going to have four characters who are the friends of Antonio. neo neo this is a hint for you that at the end of each character uh, neo comes so there are actually 19 characters that is why uh, i'm telling you that these are the hints that you need to keep your in mind bassanio marries portia and gratanio or grashanio was a funny and a very loyal person means uh, uh, some element of humor is related with gratanio as well and gratanio marries nerissa who was nerissa nerissa was the maid servant and a friend of portia as well and she was not only a maid servant but a good friend of portia as well got it you need to understand the character specifically then you are going to understand the play the servants then look here Leonardo was the servant of Bassanio and uh, Balthasar and Stefano they were the f- uh, servants of Portia I separately mentioned all the characters uh, for your convenience then Jessica Jessica was basically daughter of Shylock Shylock a villain uh, a money lender a Jew and uh, she was be- actually fed up of uh, over protection of her father or uh, uh, she, uh, she she did not like father's uh, her father's approach uh, not only for the reason that uh, he was over protected uh, so for uh, jessica's concern but uh, there are some uh, different aspects as well that she did she, she did, did not like the father's approach we will be discussing uh, all of 
those aspects as well and jessica marries lorenzo he was an aristocrat means he was uh, not a poor man uh, he had a good repute in society so jessica marries lorenzo bassanio marries portia gratania marries nerissa please uh, understand the characterization uh, in a proper way then you are going to understand the play as well Tubal is a character who tells uh, Shylock about the loss of ships of Antonio. Antonio basically lost uh, a news uh, came that Antonio lost all of his ships, uh, and uh, this was the news uh, told by Tubal to Shylock. So he uh, uh, Lancelot. Uh, there is uh, Lancelot Gobbo. Lancelot Gobbo basically is a clown. or a joker clown basically is a very much uh, a significant element uh, the, or a significant role to uh, to be played uh, by these clowns or jokers in shakespeare's plays to make the audience laugh or uh, to produce a humor humorous effect so lancelot gobbo a joker a clown uh, who basically uh, in the beginning he was working with shylock but due to some reasons uh, uh, or uh, due to the approach of shylock he left him now and old gobbo is the father of lancelot gobbo and uh, some main characters and their descriptions uh, actually i as i told you there are 19 characters and almost i have uh, covered all the characters i explained all of uh, about all of them now the main characters in the play first of all antonio the protagonist the hero in the play he was a venetian merchant venetian means that he used to live in venice that is why he is called venetian and he was merchant who borrows money from shylock uh, for his friend bassanio who was the friend of antonio bassanio got it and uh, antonio borrows some money from shylock because antonio basically was a very rich merchant but he uh, lost all of his ships and uh, that is why he was not having money at that time and bassanio oh, he needed some money <coughs> sorry because he mm, wanted to marry portia so he uh, demanded money from shylock then bassanio is antonio's friend Uh, who needs money to marry portia and uh, bassanio also supports antonio in every uh, difficult time then we are going to have portia portia is a well a wealthy a rich heiress whose father plans the riddle of three caskets that i already explained you gold silver and lead and she wants uh, to marry Uh, bassanio uh, 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 she was a very much rich lady and beautiful and wise as well then balthazar balthazar basically portia as balthazar she uh, was in disguise of a lawyer i told you that portia presented herself uh, as a lawyer Uh, and the, the, then portia when she presented herself as a lawyer she uh, gave uh, the herself the name of balthazar so uh, the, this character uh, portia has given this name to uh, her character as a lawyer and uh, as a lawyer she uh, fought the case of antonio in court got it Uh, we are going to uh, uh, read about the uh, uh, all the characters in detail inshallah then nerissa nerissa was a maid uh, servant and friend of portia as well and uh, she is uh, also famous uh, for her strong common sense and uh, uh, judgment sense of judgment as well so these were some important characters in the description let's discuss the themes of the play a very much important uh, question uh, girls let me explain you or uh, let, uh, let me uh, in the beginning of the play tell you that you are going to have some questions <coughs> sorry about the main characters as well so about the main characters you need to make some notes then about the play you can have any question on any of the themes of the play got it first play uh, theme is 
prejudice or you can say uh, we can also name it as racism and hatred you have uh, you read about the term racisms in uh, i have a dream and uh, glory and hope uh, by nelson mandela what is racism means one race uh, or one nation develops uh, uh, hatred for the other nation and same same is the case prejudice means that uh, you, uh, when uh, you you develop prejudice against other persons other characters uh, due to uh, uh, it, it, the reason can be anything due to any reason so you you, you develop hatred so theme can be prejudice racism or hatred so uh, let me brief you uh, that uh, shylock basically developed uh, uh, this uh, racism hatred and prejudice against antonio and antonio uh, developed this uh, against uh, shylock and uh, uh, basically uh, again let me explain you that antonio being a christian and shylock was jew and uh, uh, Antonio uh, called Shylock a dog, a cur. C U R cur. In 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 play, the word cur is used, me, which means dog. He Antonio calls Shylock a dog, a cur. Spits on him on him, and forces him to turn into Christianity. uh let me uh, ask you one thing can we uh, force someone uh, to turn into other religion as well is it so easy uh, so uh, keep some important points in your mind and then we are we will be starting the reading of the play and uh, it might be one of the reasons that uh, uh, shylock uh, developed hatred and prejudice against antonio uh, you you will you will be observing that uh, uh, use of these uh, uh, hateful expressions for a shylock by antonio uh, uh, i don't think so it is justified uh, anyhow uh, that shakespeare has presented uh, another uh, theme here that uh, the, the, the hatred between christians and jews okay then theme of mercy teachings of christianity are basically taught and uh, uh, in teachings of christianity mercy plays in uh, uh, significant roles and every uh, character uh, every christian character wants uh, uh, from every person to have mercy uh, upon each other and uh, uh, here uh, uh, when uh, the case of antonio was presented in front of the court uh, portia's dialogue is there portia convinces uh, uh, um, Shylock the to to have mercy upon uh, Antonio and she says mercy has its own reward so uh, Shylock you must show some mercy for Antonio then is there is a theme of appearance versus reality sometimes some uh, things and characters they appear in a different way but they are in reality they are Uh, they have something different uh, aspect three caskets they appear as a greed as a temptation as they are presented as a temptation they are put in front of the uh, three persons as temptation uh, but actually it was in reality uh, it was the worry it were the worries of a father because he wanted to uh, for portia he wanted to select a suitable man so apparently next portia appears uh, as a law- lawyer in disguise but uh, uh, in reality she was not a lawyer she was a beautiful and wise a rich lady then theme of lack of control uh, you know that uh, uh, being a human yeah uh, or uh, as a human being uh, we sometimes uh, feel that we are uh, uh, lacking control over our destiny we are lacking control over circumstances conditions situations because you do not uh, know that when the situation is going to be turned is going to be against uh, or in favor of you so uh, first of all 
Antonio has no control over destiny. You can observe that being a, he was a very rich merchant, but suddenly he came to know that all of his ships were lost. This is the lack of control over fortune, over destiny. Portia has no control whom she marries. She is very much worried that uh, uh, his father is going to select a man, whether he would be suitable or not. Though he had a faith and trust in his father's selection. Shylock is controlled by hatred and prejudice for Antonio and for all the Christians as well. Bisenio is under control of his debts because Bisenio was uh, used to live a luxurious life. He was spent thrift. He used to spend a lot of money. So he is called, so he is called a spent thrift uh, because uh, he used to spend a lot of money. He used to waste a lot of money. That is why uh, he was under uh, the control of some debts. And he also asks or demands uh, money of uh, 3,000 ducats. Ducats basically is a currency. Is a, is you can say that it's a money. And uh, uh, he asks for 3,000 ducats from uh, Antonio. And uh, that is the main reason that the play, uh, what happens in the play, we will be inshallah reading. And then Jessica. Jessica lives her life under her father's protection. As I told you that uh, Jessica is uh, uh, the daughter of Shylock and she was very much fed up. Or she wanted to get rid of, of uh, the overprotection of her father. And that is why uh, she uh, left uh, her father and she married the person of her own choice. Uh, then uh, the theme of ideals versus reality. Uh, or, or you can say idea of opposites ideals versus reality means that uh, uh, sometimes you set some ideals for you you have some standards for you and uh, uh, but which are opposite to reality and sometimes your your standards your ideals uh, uh, they can be good or they can be have some negative or pessimistic uh, uh, element as well so in this place some ideals um, uh, versus reality uh, or we are going to study about them love versus for example money here we would find that uh, money is very much uh, ideal or uh, you can say is one of the ideals or the standards uh, for Shylock you can say Bassanio also uh, wanted, though he was a very good uh, person, uh, but kind person, a nice person, but uh, he wanted to be rich and uh, he loved uh, to have uh, money. So uh, this, these are the ideals uh, of uh, money. You can say money is the ideal of uh, uh, Shylock specifically for Antonio as well, uh, but specifically for Shylock. But uh, we, on the other hand, uh, we observe that uh, uh, Portia being a very much wealthy and rich lady, she doesn't value money. Love is everything or love is the supreme passion for Portia. And she sacrifices everything. She is ready to sacrifice all of her wealth for Bassanio or for Bassanio's uh, friend you can say uh, and uh, similarly uh, Antonio uh, doesn't value money and he gives uh, he, he demands for 3000 decades from Shylock for the love of Bassanio his friend so this is the ideals versus reality then you can also say that um, uh, uh, it is this th this this can be the theme the love versus re money ideals versus reality the love versus money you can have this as a separate theme as well or uh, we can say that self interest versus love or self interest versus selflessness who was a s selfless person selfish and selflessness Portia, Antonio, 
the, the, the we can say that Bisanio, these are all specifically Portia and Antonio. They uh, they they don't have any uh, interest. They don't have any uh, interest in in their own. Uh, you can say in in. Uh, just to be to rich they already there they were very much rich rich but they they don't have any interest in their own status to raise their own status they were selfless characters who never thought about themselves about their future about their uh, uh, status they only had uh, given the preference to love so this can be the uh, theme of self-interest versus love or self-interest versus selflessness got it so you must be actually aware of uh, all the terms girls uh, so that you may not have any kind of difficulty then mercy versus revenge shakespeare uh, students uh, has tried uh, to uh, convey uh, the theme of uh, uh, religion as well through uh, the presentation of uh, Christian characters and, and Jew character that is Shylock. Actually uh, during Renaissance age uh, uh, this was a great conflict. You can also be asked this question girls what is the conflict in the play? let me explain very much clearly we are going to have the conflict between christians and jews uh, and the conflict between shylock and antonio this can be presented in this way as well and shakespeare during that age of renaissance it was basically uh, in society this was the major issue uh, that, uh, that 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 was arised at that time the the hatred prejudice uh, between christians and jews so uh, uh, so for christians are concerned they wanted to spread their teachings they wanted to to, to have mercy in every one so that the society can run in a smooth way but on the opposite but uh, christians they did they did not deal jews uh, uh, in a proper way they developed uh, hatred for jews and uh, that was the reason that uh, during renaissance age as presented in this play as well uh, the jews uh, due to the such kind of uh, um, uh, 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 you can say response and attitude of christians want to take revenge from Christians as we are observing you will be observing that Shylock wanted to take revenge uh, or he, he becomes revengeful uh, against uh, Shyla uh, against Antonio so this is a very much important theme or we can also say uh, call this theme of mercy versus revenge as a theme of religion then the last theme is uh, uh, the friendship theme of friendship very much important theme we, uh, we will be observing that Pisanio and Antonio are going uh, are having a great uh, example or exemplary uh, you can say characters are uh, there uh, to represent friendship they had great friendship and uh, again I am going to repeat that Pisanio wants uh, to marry Portia so uh, to marry Portia as she was a very much wealthy and rich lady he demands uh, from Antonio to give Bassanio 3000 ducats as Antonio lost all of his ships so Antonio for the friendship of Bassanio he asks he demands 3000 ducats from Shylock that was his you can say enemy as uh, but he asked for, for 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 the money due only due to the friendship of Bassanio. You can uh, observe that uh, he even forgot his egoism is everything. But uh, this is all that was done by uh, Antonio for the friend. Then Narissa and Portia are going to have good friendship. 
Nerissa though was a maid servant of Portia but uh, she uh, always remains in e- in in every thick and thin in every difficult circumstances with Portia and uh, both are going to have a good relation as well so uh, girls uh, uh, till uh, today these uh, this is all about uh, Shakespeare's play as uh, you are uh, given this assignment to understand the characterizations to understand the themes uh, to understand the each and every aspect that i uh, explained you in detail and i am going to send you in your respective groups some questions and you are going to answer me the uh, the, the all of those important uh, questions uh, because you can have uh, um, uh, the any question uh, about uh, the themes about genre about characterizations about the language about the settings anything in objective and descriptive papers both so understand this background today uh, in a proper and perfect way then we will be inshallah starting from uh, tomorrow uh, the reading and explanation of the play as well uh, till now allah hafiz and